Now we know what Hamza Shemaev is made of. He goes into a fight with Gilbert Burns, barely winning the fight. It was extremely competitive. Both guys showing a tremendous amount of heart. And that is something that's good to see out of Hamza Shemaev moving forward. We always knew Gilbert Burns had a lot of heart, but not necessarily a chin. That also showed in the fight as well, where Hamza was able to drop him with a southpaw jab. Southpaw jab from Hamza. He probably took a page out of Kumar Usman's book, because Kumar Usman dropped Burns with the very same punch. It might just be a punch that Burns cannot see. Usman probably saw it in training and sparring with Gilbert Burns that just naturally, there's something wrong with Burns when a southpaw jab comes at him. He just can't see it. Hamza brought that also into this fight, where we never saw him fight in the southpaw stance in the UFC. And at the end of the day, we know a lot of people thought that Hamza was going to steamroll Burns. I mean, the odds show that. Most people thought that Hamza was going to run right through Burns and Burns couldn't take his power. Then there's some that thought that Hamza wasn't ready for this kind of step up. Can we give respect to both guys? Forget about the hype. In reality, this is why I try to get to in my prediction video. Why I didn't pick one over the other heavily or something like that. I made it almost a pick em fight where it was pretty much down even. In reality, on paper... Hamza is a young fighter with only four fights in the UFC. To be able to compete with the number two guy is impressive, regardless of who you are. On paper, that guy is not supposed to win. People seem to forget how big of a jump this was. It is expected for a young fighter like him to lose. But he pulled out a victory against one of the best fighters in the world. And let's give credit to Gilbert Burns. He's tougher than everybody thought. And ultimately his experience proved a lot of people wrong about his capabilities. But there's some confirmation that we have from this fight. I broke down Hamza Shemaev's training videos. And from some of the things that you saw that I picked out was... Hamza doesn't move his head. He has a tight guard, especially with his left hand, always keeping it up there. Well, he showed that in the fight as well. He almost never moved his head off the center line. Hamza's head movement was so non-existent that Burns was just throwing out naked right straights, naked right overhands, no setup, hugely telegraphed, and Shemaev will still eat them. And even some moments where there were multiple right hands in a row, and Hamza was not able to defend any of them. It was such a habit of him to hold his left hand up, that when Burns would throw the right straight, Hamza would try to parry it with his right hand when that's actually backwards. You want to parry it with your left hand, but he was so used to just keeping it glued to his head, he never dropped it. But it did help him block a lot of the right overhands. But here's what we know about Hamza Shemaev. We know he has power. Now we know he has a great jab from both stances. That's excellent for a young fighter moving forward. The jab is one of the best fundamental weapons you can use, and he's shown to be more of a boxer on the feet than anything else. He has an insane chin. Ridiculous ridiculous chin to take those overhands from someone like Gilbert Burns. Multiple sequences where he was eating full-on overhands to the face, and from most of them not getting hurt too much. And we know he's so strong. Look at some of those grappling exchanges for an example where Hamza had the body lock and he was literally dragging Gilbert Burns across the canvas. Or when Gilbert Burns was going for the single leg takedown and couldn't even budge Hamzat's leg. That's a tremendous amount of strength that now we can kind of compare to some of the top guys in this division. Hamza is extremely physical for a welterweight, but his striking isn't that technical. And how can it be? He's only been striking for a few years. But we do have to note that down because from now on moving forward, he's going to be fighting the best fighters in this division. Number two, he brawls way too much. Him brawling actually got him hurt multiple times in the fight. He was doing much better not brawling, using his reach being technical behind the jab, than brawling going forward trying to overpower Gilbert Burns. When he was trying to overpower him looking for the big knockout that many people thought that Hamza would be able to do, that was actually what was getting him caught. And when you look at that third round, he actually adapted. He adapted in the third round and stopped brawling so much. He actually stuck behind his jab for the majority of that round and was winning it. The other thing is, his takedowns are great. But against someone like Gilbert Burns and potentially some of the other top fighters in the welterweight division, they're not quite as effective as we thought. Many of us thought that his takedowns should be some of the most effective in the entire division. And they are one of the most effective. But with him having such a hard time taking Burns down and controlling him, it potentially shows us that he might not be able to take Colby or Usman to the ground. Certainly Usman. Hamza also doesn't check leg kicks. Leg kicks just get slammed on him. Maybe he's going to address this in the future, but as of what we know, from this fight is Hamza does not address leg kicks at all. Doesn't use them to shoot takedowns, doesn't check them. Another thing we learned about Hamza is when he's moving, throwing, throwing big punches out there, uppercuts and stuff like that, and has the opponent up against the fence, you really see him shoot for a takedown in case things get dangerous the way Habib and Islam did. He's extremely content on brawling with you. Maybe believes a little bit too much in his own power. And like I said before, that's a huge reason as to why he was getting caught by Gilbert Burns. For an example, he'll swing in three huge hooks, stay right in front of Burns as Burns is rolling with the punches, 
and he's able to connect on Hamza with his right overhand. Clear difference in defense between the two fighters. Or another example, he'll throw in a left straight, keep his hands down as he's going to load up in his right hand. Burns pulling and slipping on the outside of the punch. He's able to land his right straight down the center on Hamza and stumble him backwards. Or even when he connects with the 1-2 and digs in all the way with it, gets right in front of Burns, not minding distance management at all. Burns gets hit, but he still counters Hamza over the top with the overhand. And this is ultimately what caused Gilbert Burns to drop Hamza. Hamza went so defenseless right in front of Burns, no distance management again, dropping his right hand trying to swing a huge uppercut and eats an overhand right in the process. There was such a difference in the success from Hamza that there was literally a moment in that second round where he switched from being wild to being composed and long, then wild again to composed and long again. He swung a huge right overhand, got completely off balance and missed the punch. Then as he re-engages, he pumps out a jab, able to see that Gilbert Burns is winking a right hook of his own and he connects with it. Then he gets wild again. Burns extends a jab and Hamza is trying to land an overhand over the top, but ultimately gets shoulder rolled. Then he gets composed and long again, waits for Burns to come in on him. Burns drops his levels to go for a body jab and Hamza just touches him with a right straight no wind up at all. Then you go into the third round where Hamza was fighting a lot more calm and long. He was able to keep Burns against the fence and Burns necessarily didn't even know what to do. Hamza was pumping out jabs from the southpaw stance. He extends his right hand out there again, measuring distance between him and Burns. Burns swings that overhand right and Hamza is able to pull away from it, lands his long jab again. If he did this from the beginning of the fight onward, I don't think this fight would have been as hard for him. Or there was another moment in the second round where he is able to pull counter Burns' jab by simply waiting for him to move forward, pulls back and counters over the top with his right. And the last thing about Hamza is that his cardio is questionable. Before the fight, he's been talking about how he's a cardio king, where he will never get tired. And a lot of people thought so. I mean, the way he was dismantling those guys before, there was a lot of pressure, a lot of punches getting thrown, and he was not gassing out. But the thing we do have to also notice and actually be fair about it is, this fight was mostly power punches getting thrown at a very fast pace. A lot of guys will get tired in that kind of fight. Even Burns has gone five rounds before. He was exhausted in the third round. And ultimately, when we talk about the fight, it wasn't really a technical fight. But man, did it show the heart of both of these warriors. That's what it was about. Things started off technical with the takedown, the pressure, the way Hamza was able to set up for his right hook, which ultimately failed because Gilbert Burns was on it. When the punches started to land on each other, the game plans, the technicality of the fight went out the window and both these guys wanted to make a statement in the fight and ultimately it was failing Hamza in that kind of fight Burns was the better brawler he was the guy landing the better punches when things got crazy but when things stayed more technical and composed and calm it was actually Hamza doing better landing the southpaw jab landing the many jabs afterward landing the tight right hands as Gilbert Burns is ducking whenever Burns was ducking down and throwing these big overhands and Hamza resorted to using his jabs and tight punches instead of these winging long-range uppercuts and stuff he was able to get the punches down the center line, connect on Burns first, and ultimately get out scot-free. And we know that his jabs are always hurting Gilbert Burns. Right in the beginning of it, Burns actually was backing up quickly away from Shemaev, actually showing a lot of respect to Shemaev's pressure, power, and size, until he felt it. Once the punches started to land, Burns wasn't as respectful of it. He would start to move forward more, start to throw punches forward. But in the beginning of the fight when he was moving away, maybe trying to just dictate, download some data so he can get more comfortable in the fight, Hamza was throwing push kicks once he noticed that Burns backed up and the corner was behind him. So from these push kicks, Burns was backing up into the right side of the fence where Hamza is facing. After Hamza pressures forward and now Burns is against the fence, Hamza is crowding a little bit of that left space which is going to encourage Burns to try to move out towards Hamzat's right side, away from the corner. But ultimately, Hamzat used this as a setup to try to intercept Burns with a right hook. It was a great strategy that he had, but I don't think Hamza expected Burns to throw back at him. Burns pulled on the right hook, tried to land his left hook, which went right behind and over Hamza's head, and Hamza attempted that takedown and had a rough time trying to control Gilbert Burns. Up until the moment where Burns rolls and Hamza shows his wrestling skill to flow through. But then Burns shows his BJJ skill to recognize the pass into half or side control that Hamza has there. So Burns extends his leg in between of Hamza's, bends it into a butterfly hook, shrimping into a knee shield, creating separation so Hamza's ground and pound cannot reach Burns and causes Hamza to eventually abandon the position. This is why you do not underestimate Gilbert Burns' BJJ skills. It's not all about submissions. 
His BJJ alone allowed him for himself to not get hit by the ground and pound that Shemaev is known for. So ultimately, it was not really a technical fight. There wasn't too much nuance about this, except from the power shots being thrown, the game plan, and how the two fighters were changing throughout the fight and what they had to adapt on, as well as exposing the unknowns of Hamza Shemaev. Those were the important things about the fight. What I believe here is Hamza is not ready for Usman. He had a hard time taking Burns down. He had a hard time controlling him. He was getting hit by a lot of right hands. Didn't show head movement. Usman hits harder than Burns and also longer. Hamza is not going to be longer than Usman. So he's not going to be able to fight that composed long way. That is a very dangerous fight for Hamza Shemaev. It looks like a fight with Colby Covington seems to be next for Hamza. That's a better fight for him. That's a more doable fight. Where he is going to be bigger. He is going to be longer. He's going to be more powerful. But at the end of the day, if Hamza's cardio cannot hold up for five rounds, that's going to be a dicey fight for him. And also, can he take Colby down? That's another question there. Colby's a great wrestler. We've seen him get taken down in the past. But he's really hard to control. And as for Gilbert Burns, I would like to see him fight maybe... Jorge Masvidal, or potentially the winner of Blah Muhammad versus Vicente Luque. Those seems to be the best fights for him. Losing to Hamza should not lower him in the rankings that much. This more proves that Hamza belongs in the top five. So that's the end of the breakdown, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed it. And if you did, make sure to give this video a thumbs up. If you're my content, make sure to subscribe. And also make sure to hit the bell. I'll see you guys in the next one.